Hi everybody! Um, last day of the year, last year, um, I have watched the video from Ronald regarding uh, the comparison between the Spearman and the Turkish bulls from Juven. And um, the V3, so the second, third batch, uh, is very interesting and so I thought this development of the Turkish bow design uh, is very interesting for me because it completes my Turkish bow collection. And last Thursday the bow has arrived. So here we have the version 3 or batch 3 um, of the Yuven bow. And um, yeah, it's a very beautiful bow. It looks different just first sight. So maybe you have watched or have not um, the video regarding the Keskin bow. It's the Turkish bow as well. And um, this bow is laminated purely, but this one is different. So the first eye striking is the carbon look. And this is not only a look, it is carbon. And uh, so this is eye striking. Then um, the extremely narrow arrow pass, very eye striking. And um, the development here in the Zia section. But we come to this in a bit. First of all, the specs. Um, this bow has a length knock to knock, measured from here where the string is attached, 51.25, and strung it's 47.5 inches long. The arrow pass has 18.5 millimeters, including the ray skin. Um, the ray skin, just uh, to mention this, is not. Um, filed down to the to the minimum so it's flattened but it's not completely flat so maybe I can show in between and you can see it here um, the weight is uh, 360 gram round, uh, roughly and um, what else uh, brace height measured from the, the belly is 7.25 um, we have a bending length in total, so between here and there, both sides of 27.25 millimeters around. Um, this means that we have a relatively long handle section, although the handle is here, but the section is from here to there. And the Zia is a bit longer than uh, I would usually expect it from a Turkish bow. So uh, usually these are from both sides around 10 inches. Here I measured until this point and in total it's around 15. Um, according to the bamboo archery table, usually you would go down then uh, a line lower. That means not 10 grain per pound, but 11 grain per pound. Um, but yeah. Every table has um, its own way of interpretation, so usually I would not uh, suggest that this bow has a long zier. So this is the reason why I think 10 uh, grain per pound is fine. But for the bending length, this is then interesting. Yeah, so this is the reason why I measured it up to here. Um, is there something I did not mention? Let me see. Uh, la la la. Also, <laughs> max draw is 31 inches, as Ronald has already told you. And um, this bow has a strength of 38 at 28 inches. Just a moment. There's a little wind. Uh, la la la. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, mentioned everything. Then materials. And this is quite interesting. It has carbon on the outside, and then there is a ceramic foam as the next layer, then ash, yeah, ash wood, and fiberglass. And, uh, yeah, this makes it a sturdy piece. And um, the handle has inside a techno wood. And uh, techno woods um, vary with their, their colors. Sometimes they are astonishingly red and um, orange. This one is a bit more in the purple. Maybe you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. I come towards the camera. Yeah, now you can see it properly. 
so it's very beautiful and uh, the ray skin matches perfectly regarding color scheme. Here you can see the sign from Yuven. Um, Ronald has uh, translated it for me, but uh, I don't remember yet. I will note it down here somewhere. And um, this drawing is, um, yeah, we don't know. I see um, a fire and a lot of dots with arrow points. <laughs> um, every psychologist would be very interesting for everybody's interpretation. <laughs> um, yeah, why not? And uh, it's funny and uh, drives imagination. Yeah, that's about the specs and the material. And now we want to know if um, the strength of the bow is the same as um, the Boyer has measured uh, mid of December. So the bow has been built mid of December last year. Okay, we have the first marking at 28, the second at 29, and this is the next draw, the yellow one. Maybe like this. So this is 28. Today, 63.56. That's no, no worries. So 29. 39.48. And now I try to uh, reach the max draw. Forty-four oh four. So I'm capable of going to the max, but uh, this is not the Turkish way I draw. And so um, usually I will draw it up to 28 or so. And uh, that leads us to the next section, shooting. So before continuing, I let you know about um, the circumstances. We are here at around 8 degrees Celsius and 39. Um, humidity. So you, well, 40 mm, depends. Yeah? So if uh, we go down in humidity then the bow gets a, little, a bit stiffer. All right. So now I show you the handle. Uh, the handle is relatively uh, thin although the circumference is four inches like most of the um, handles are. But um, it's a bit slimmer. Yeah, you see here the slim line and my yeah my size is S or 7 and you see that I nearly touch my thumb here. So for huge male hands um, you would maybe wrap more leather around it. Yeah and he can see everything nicely again. Um, this leather here feels very nice, very soft, although um, the structure uh, provides a little grip. It's very nice. And here stitching is also very good. Excellent. Um, I shoot now um, three different arrows. Um, this one is the lightest one. It has a spine of 800 and it's a little longer. So uh, I expect that this uh, arrow goes more to the left because it's a bit too weak. Um, the next one is uh, spine 500. So this one is too stiff. <laughs> it has a right length. It's a little heavier. So this one has uh, 324 grain. Uh, this one has 374 grain. And my all-time favorites are these ones. They are uh, more than required for the bow. They have 474 grain and uh, so this is the heaviest one. Um, more than 100 grain higher than needed but it has a spine of 700 and it's usually very working uh, working very well with bows in this strength. 
So. And then, first shots for me. Uh, Ronald uh, has already test shot him uh, the bow, so the bow works fine. Short distance at around seven meters. That was straight into the center. So sometimes ex expectations are wrong. Yeah, so sound is a bit louder, but I didn't check the brace height today, so. This one went a little to the left, and now it's a little heavier with a higher spine or stiffer spine. To the right, this is per expectation, so I need to um, correct it. Yeah, pointed more to the left and then it went a little more to the center, but yet not there. That was in the center and now the all-time favorites. Maybe you uh, check the sound, the sound was similar. Maybe the sound changes now with the heavier arrows. Not really. A bit to the left, but not much. Nice group. I show you. So. These ones. So this was the very first shot, straight into the center. This one was a bit off and then the third one went to the left. So these are the weak ones. Then we have the very stiff ones. First to the right, second more to the center, third in the center. And my all-time favorites are a bit more to the left side, but all relatively close together. So. Um, yeah, I can do the speed tests with all of them, but uh, due to time, um, I would reduce it to two. Um, I just take the very light ones and the all-time favorites. The house, the feeling of the bow. So it's very nice. So if you have um, here the handle and um, to my hand, it fits very nicely. Uh, you have it under control very easily. There is nothing hurting. Um, fingers are fine. And uh, you can do whatever style you are practicing. And uh, the sound is a bit louder than uh, with some other bows. But uh, the draw experience is very nice. So very smooth draw. So... Um, all the time there is tension, there is no weak point or so, it's just going up more like a straight line. Um, I have uh, in the beginning of the video you see uh, a draw curve, a drawing curve, um, that I have measured uh, with my rig inside. So this is a fabric band that pulls on um, the scale and there's always uh, a bit less pounded shown than it's in reality. But um, the curve itself is always representative. So. And the last heavy one. So maybe you can see on the fletching they are very often used in shot. A line, not a group. Mm. 
And here the fetching is a bit off. Oh, yeah. Mm, there's no really. <laughs> to the left. And maybe the sound is a bit higher. Than with the heavy ones. Mm -hmm. This one went now far to the left and went into the wood. Need to compensate. Then it's in the center. I fetch now the arrow from the fence. <laughs> so can you have fun with this bow? Yes, of course. You can shoot reverse. And you can shoot on one leg. And what else? Going down is possible, of course, too. Yeah, it's a short bow. But since uh, it has, it was a hail rain this morning, everything is wet, I don't do it. I can go a bit lower. So uh, this works all very fine. So can you hold arrows in your bow hand if you wish so? Yeah, yeah, you can do everything you want. Uh, I'm not the one who would practice it because I tried it once and afterwards I got bruises here on my fingers uh, because the arrows have been vibrating and my hand was not used to it. So I do not like it, but there are good reasons uh, to practice, practice it if you don't have a quiver and you're limited um, on this style to uh, if you get to so six six arrows probably are working usually I have three so I like to shoot uh, the heavy arrows now because um, the light ones uh, go more to the left and if you have um, so different arrows it's a bit tricky. So this is then easier to stick with one set. That one was in the center. So very nicely working balls. I show you the shape here. Uh, the 60 degree angle I measured yesterday at 29.5 inches draw length. So I've not practiced walking archery to be honest because um, otherwise it would look all the same muddy style like this. But uh, I can give it a try. I will be walking very slowly. <laughs> and then I stop. I think it's not as one intended it with walking style. <laughs> so yeah, if you focus on walking and you haven't practiced it before, then it's more you focus on the walking but not on the shooting. And this is exactly what the result's looking like. <laughs> totally off. So I plan for a comparison video of my Turkish style bows. And uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward, especially um, if you compare speed and performance. So I have no bow that is not nice. Um, so it's very difficult to say this one is superior to the other because they are all made by excellent craftsmen and um, they are all of the beautiful design. <laughs> really hard. And in the end, it's the archer 
who throws the arrows away. I'm sorry for the planes, they are flying now minute-wise. First, the light arrows, the 324 grain. Hundred eighty nine, hundred eighty four, hundred eighty six, and the heavies with 470 around. Hundred fifty six. Error. I will do this again. Another error. <laughs> I need to do this again. Hopefully, we do now the correct measurements with the heavy arrows with around 470 grain. 156. I've seen this value before. Hundred fifty nine sounds with another hundred sixty six. So, uh, if you have watched uh, Ronald's video, he has also taken um, the speed test and uh, he had a companion with him who has told him when he has reached the twenty eight inches. I didn't. Yeah, so uh, as you have seen, I've just pulled and released and this is um, approximately the speed that I get with my draw length out of this bow under these circumstances. And uh, if you pull this bow up to 31, then you will of course get much higher speed than I do. Uh, I could try to pull it to 31, but then the release would be crap. and. Uh, not so sure where the arrow goes. So I have neighbors here on the other side of the fence. <laughs> I don't want to ruin something. Okay, so that's the reason why I don't do it. And it would, uh, or this is reflecting my personal shooting style. And speed is very good. So this is a fast bow, similar to the Zeljuk. And um, I think the Griffin was also very fast. So these are the very fast bows and as one has uh, said already, this is due to the very efficient Zia design. And uh, yeah, very nice. By the way, have you noticed this very small Zia's? They're extremely cute. <laughs> yeah, so it's a very beautiful bow. Yeah, so if you think so, hmm, should I or should I not? Yeah. Yeah, this is a center shot. Now a bit off. Need to focus more. That's a good one, I show you. So Grisemi. What do I think of my Yuven bow, Turkish bow, Bash 3 or third version? Uh, in cooperation with Bamboo Archery. What a long title. Uh, 
it's an excellent bow. Yeah, so uh, performance is very good, speed is very good. Uh, of course, it's easy to string. It's the Turkish form this is always easy. The bow is a short bow in the category short, um, which with a little longer zias as I would have expected. Um, but this is only due to the transition area here. Um, the zias are extremely small and thin. My finger. <laughs> yeah, so it's incredible. Here you see uh, the mini string bitches. This is really small, so if you fire that, uh, these little thingies can just go away. So this is wow. And this is horn. The yeah, mini string bitch is horn. Reinforced tips are horn as well. And yeah, look. <laughs> it's so my finger behind and you can still see it. Um, arrow pass. Extremely narrow. So I measured 19.5 millimeters including the ray skin. Subject one and you have the real arrow pass that is working. And this is only possible if you have um, this action wood. Action wood is um, wood that is um, where the water inside the wood is replaced with epoxy. And so this is that stabilized. Yeah, you wouldn't do or create a small uh, or thin arrow path with natural grown wood. I wouldn't do it. But uh, this is possible. Um, what else? It's my first bow that has carbon on the outside. I have a lot of bows that have carbon inside but not outside. Um, and then there is no bamboo inside. This is also, I don't have many bows without bamboo and um, it's my first UN bow. <laughs> uh, so very good. I like it. So if you compare it to, um, to the standard laminated bows and say a standard laminated bow is a telephone, then this is a smartphone. Yeah. And um, so this is development. And um, yeah, very cool, very shiny looking uh, craftsmanship is beautiful, it's flawless. Uh, you have no edges. Uh, quality is really high. And uh, what else? Um, creativity of uh, the boya is also documented. <laughs> and uh, yeah, these signs. Um, I have given you the translation already. Um, yeah, so the one who has created and built these bows uh, loves this bows as well. So we can see it, although it's um, not um, specially made for me, but um, these bows are all very beautiful. You could see this bow uh, at Varus. Um, uh, review already. So we had the first one that was was delivered, I think. Um, I'm not sure which one this is now, so if it's whatsoever, it doesn't matter anyway. So this is my first. And uh, the draw is very smooth and very nice. Uh, I didn't mention before, this is a fast flight string. Yeah, no problem. Um, so this is 28 here, and this is 31, approximately. Uh, sound is a bit louder than um, I have for a few bows, but I would need to compare it to another Turkish bow, of course. And um, they are all a little different, and of course materials um, change the sound a bit. And, uh, in this case, it's not because the string has much contact. <laughs> no, not by far not. And um, yeah, maybe fast flight strings provide another sound, but uh, usually sound comes through resonation. And uh, yeah, since this material is dense, um, maybe this is the reason for the sound. And um, 
vibration as we always have is just one, two, gone. You know, so it's just minor. If you shoot, um, you don't feel it at all. Yeah, so if hand shock is there, then we are there. Yeah, so no hand shock. Um, what else to say? Uh, price. Uh, I bought it a few weeks ago. Mm. Needed to look up. But anyway, ask Ronald. Uh, he's the one who would sell it. And uh, there is no other distributor for this bow. So this is a special version um, sold through Bamboo Archery. Okay. Um, I will create or uh, do a video, a comparison video of all my Turkish bow, bows, style bows I have. And uh, I will be very interested um, how this bow is compared to the others. Um, so speed-wise, I think it's, it's one of the fastest, but the Keskin was also fast. Um, I think this is a really close race, very close. Well, thank you very much for you and for building this bow and for Ronald who has uh, provided all his feedback and experience to this. And uh, you have done a great job, you all of us. And thanks everybody for watching. I wish you a great start into the week and um, fingers crossed for friends in Ukraine. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.